Hello everyone, I'm Arunima from Nitin Otter and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a border for my IPSA blanket. Uh, this is a support video for the IPSA uh, blanket which is my 2024 blanket cal. Uh, if you are interested in the details I'm going to add a link to it in the description below but uh, this is just a traditional single crochet border. Uh, the only uh, detail that i've added is how to how to manage uh, your border at these um, at these corners and at these dips so um, that's that's what i'm going to mainly cover in here i'm okay. going to make my border with this color uh, hopefully it'll be easier to see than if i do it with the white which is white on white so i'm going to do it with this color but in my blanket i have used uh, the the white which is called bear uh, in the knit picks chroma yarn so this is my forward pass color the one that's that's showing here and that's what i used for my blanket but this is what i'm going to use for the tutorial here and I generally uh, like to join my yarn at a at closer to a dip. There's there's no specific reason. I just like that. You could join it wherever at any point. I just recommend not doing it at a corner uh, because you're going to be increasing there. So just join it anywhere. And I'm going to work my border only in the back loop. So this is the back loop. I'm going to insert my hook here. And I'm going to take this yarn, pull through, and I'm going to chain one to lock it. And I'm, I'm using a 3.5 millimeters hook, which is the hook recommended for this yarn. So um, because this is traditional single crochet, we're not going up a hook size with this. So here I have locked that yarn, and I am now going to make a single crochet in that same spot. there and then now I'm going to make a single crochet in every slip stitch here and I'm weaving in this as I go so I have this tail that I'm just weaving in as I go but you could do it later if you'd like so just a single crochet in the back loop of every slip stitch of this hexagon until we reach the uh, the corner and i'll tell you what i do there okay so now i'm at this point which is the slip stitch right over that corner so i'm going to do three single crochets here so it's one two and three and then I continue making single crochet stitches in the back loop only until I reach the next corner and one more and then I've reached this corner again. So I'm going to make three single crochet stitches there. So one, two, three. And I'm going to continue doing this uh, for the entire edge. So I'm going to make this edge with single crochet stitches. And at this corner, I'm going to do three single crochets. So I'm going to do three single crochets in every corner here. And then I'm going to show you how I handle uh, the, this dip over here. So here I am. I'm very close to this, uh, this dip right here. So, or the valley. I think that's what is it is but either way this point uh, I'm going to continue making my single crochet stitches until I get there here and you can see that these two stitches here this one and this one are the ones that are joined so I am there, there are two options you could just let this be and just continue crocheting into the stitch that is next that's right here and that's how it looks and I didn't quite like the space over here uh, 
it's just a little detail, but that's something that wasn't, that was bothering me a bit. So um, what I did was that, well, this is slightly loose. You can see that it's loose. And um, I decided to make a single crochet in this space. If I had weaved in this end so it wasn't so tight, um, it would work out better. But what I did was, this seems like a little bit of a hack, but this is what I did. I picked up this this one strand here and there's the second one and there's the third one there so I picked up the first one and the third one and I made a single crochet there so that sorts of closes that gap and then I made a single crochet in the next so you can see that there's hardly any gap there right now I've, I've done it like three times so there's still this gap but there isn't any when you join the when you when you're doing it uh, and this looks a little hacky right now it doesn't seem very good but if you're using the same color as the as the one that i used for uh for my blanket which is the bear the white this this is hardly visible and i'll show you on this other side i'll do it just once and i'll show you how little space that has so i'm going to go around here making three single crochets in all of these corners and i'll come here and then show you how it looks so this is how it's looking after i've gone all around and made the border here uh for my uh blanket it this wasn't curling up as much uh, I probably made my single crochet stitches a bit tight in this but if this is how it's working up you are welcome to go up a hook size or two uh, it should not be curling at all at this point but there's two two choices at this point uh, you could either go up a hook size or you could block I would go up a hook size because the joint blanket is massive and it's really hard to block it at that point but you're, you're you can choose whatever you want to do uh, this didn't happen in, with me in the in the blanket that I made and I'm just guessing that's because my tension was different there so uh, if this is happening you would know after like a hexagon or two you after you made the border and you see that initially these hexagons were sitting straight and now they're curling slightly at the corners uh, I'm not too thrilled about that but well I'm glad that it happened so I can tell you that you can go up a hook size or two if this is happening or uh, make your tension slightly loose while you're making your uh, your single crochet stitches but now that we are here at this point there's another this valley to take care of so I'm going to make single crochet stitches here and then I'm at this point so I'm going to pick up this first strand of yarn right here at the back this one and then the third one here uh, making sure I'm not splitting the yarn so right here so I've got these two and I'm going to make a single crochet and you can see how there's hardly any space here I'm sorry this yarn got really dark I wasn't expecting it to but you can see the single crochet I hope that that's that's clear and then I'm going to make one single crochet in the next one so I'm not going to make one in this stitch that's already joined I'm going to go into the next one and that that completes the border this is where I started so at this point I'm just going to cut my yarn and I'm going to uh, join the ends with a invis invisible join stitch so here I am going to pull this through I'm going to thread my needle and go through this here this is the first single crochet so I'm going to go through this front to back and then into the same one as earlier and that's it I'm just going to weave this in end now so make sure that it's not too tight so I don't pull that stitch to a close so it's like making a fake single crochet in between or a fake chain stitch in between so uh, okay that's it 
So this is how it is at the join. You will not be able to make out the difference if you were. So because this is uh, the color changed significantly, that's why you can make out that here there is a join. But if it were just a solid colored yarn, you would not be able to make out. So again, I apologize for these uh, curling, but again i'm glad that it happened so i can tell you that if this happens then you can go up a hook size and you will know by the time like after you make a hex after you make the border on a hexagon or two that they are curling or not and um, if they do you have two options you could either go up a hook size or you could uh, block which i think will be hard going up a hook size might be easier so that's that's all there is for this uh, border tutorial that's how i made the border and uh, it's it's pretty much the, the, this will work for the entire blanket no matter what kind of dip there is your uh, your hexagons will have joins and wherever there is a join you can make a single crochet there and just continue working around and um, you will have your border so I decided to go for a very simple border for this blanket because it was very, very heavy as it is with all the hexagons and I didn't want a heavy border and I didn't want to take away from the hexagons themselves by giving it a heavy border. So that's uh, I just gave it a single crochet border just to give it a final finishing touch so that all these um, these joins didn't look awkward at the ends. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it. So hopefully it won't take you too long to make the border for your blanket and uh, your project will be complete. Thank you for joining me in this Cal. I had a wonderful time and um, I hope you did too. And uh, hopefully you will join me in my future projects. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.